All right, so I'm a beginning woodworker and I have just sort of been turned on to the idea of hand tools. It's going well so far, but one thing that I ran into a lot was feeling like I didn't have the money to get a good plane or chisels or, you know, that type of thing. And to be fair, you don't want to get a crappy plane as your first plane. Um, it, I've heard, can turn you off to the entire process of hand planing, hand tools. Um, but I wanted to make this video because I found a cheap plane that isn't great, but required very little to get into the condition that I feel like I can plane very well and very satisfactorily to, you know, to, to the point where it feels good. Um, I got it at Menards. It is a record Irwin number four. It was about 20 bucks. I didn't know any better at the time. I kind of lucked out. Um, anyway, I've seen YouTube videos of some of the really cheap planes and the types of issues that they have. And this one has a few of them. The tote isn't very big. I'm six foot. My hands don't quite feel great on that. It doesn't hurt or anything. I can plane with it pretty well. Um, the iron is perhaps a little on the thin side, but it has held up well and it has sharpened well. The uh, lever cap, I had to flatten it. You can see the paint's gone. I had to flatten it to make sure that it made good contact with the chip breaker here, which as far as I can tell, is a nice chip breaker. Um, I had to flatten this leading part of the chip breaker as well to make sure that it would make good contact with the iron, but I did all this with a cheap porcelain, perfectly flat tile, and this is curling up, but it does work. Some wet, dry sandpaper that you can just squish down onto the tile and it's a nice flat surface. Um, watch. Rob Cosman's videos on how to sharpen blades. That's pretty much what I do. Anyway, the thing that I wanted to point out on this cheap plane is that I did have to go in and flatten it using this and some lower grits of sandpaper and such. Um, I also had to, and this is something that people like Ross Cosman say to do on a new plane, even if it's a nice one. Um, I used a file to file out away from the sole to sort of soften these edges so I don't scrape up my wood as I'm planing. Um, but some things I noticed about this that turned out to be good, or rather not as bad as some of the really cheap ones I've seen people take apart on YouTube, is this flat part of the frog here is very flat and smooth and that's very important i've seen some cheap ones reviewed online where this part of the frog is just a mess there was even one that the uh i can't remember what his name the woodworking companion um reviewed that didn't have this little thing under the frog that goes in that slot to help hold it together but i mean this frog is in great shape um this thing here isn't perfectly centered, but it hasn't really affected anything. Anyway, so this is this is the record Irwin number four plane, and, you know, I'm going to keep it even after I get nicer planes, because after flattening it and, you know, getting it in working shape, I can plane some pretty smooth surfaces, and it makes that nice sound, and I get some nice shavings. I got... I got this shaving right here off of some the edge of a poplar board and it's the entire length of the board uh, just just the edge there so if you're wanting to learn hand planing I can't obviously promise that all of these number four Irwin planes will be as easy to set up as mine was but if you're wanting to try it and you're willing to flatten this 
do some prep work around the edges sharpen the blade make sure the chip breaker sorry that's the lever cap the lever cap is flat and the chip breaker are flat right there you'll have something for i mean about 20 bucks and some work that will get you to the point where you can discover how fun it is to plane something by hand um it's true all the youtube guys it's true what they say once you get something that planes well and you get your first cleanly planed uh, board surface that you don't even want to sand because you're afraid you'll mess it up. Um, it kind of feels like there's no going back. But anyway, thank you.